Welcome back to Play Size Studios, everyone. Ryan here with another pair of sought after AX8 tone matches. And these have actually been in the works for exactly a year at this point, so I'm pretty excited. Finally, get to demonstrate them. This is the pair of Devin Townsend AX8 patches. <laughs> covered how to get within ballpark range of Devin's signature wall of sound using free VST plugins. So if you're more of a metal musician on a budget, I'd highly recommend you go check those out. They are more than serviceable. Uh, but for today's patch, I thought it was well past due to be talking about this because I have been jamming on this since basically I got the AX8. This was one of those sounds that I wanted to you know, push that hardware to its limit and see how close I could get in its uh, pretty damn cool, if I do say so myself. So when we talk Devin Townsend's guitar tone, there's actually nothing too spectacularly different about his bass setup. Um, whether we're talking his earlier solo efforts or Strapping Young Lad or even Devin Townsend Project, it's basically a guitar with active pickups through a Tube Screamer and a 5150 dual rectifier type half stack. It's nothing that we haven't already covered in this exact series. Um, it just, you know, those individual pieces of gear have changed over time. I'm using a guitar with EMGs, he's now using Fishman's. Um, of course, most of his setup's completely digital, but it's all emulating that same sound. Um, of course, it helps when you're playing with drummers like Gene Hoagland and RVP, and um, you mix all that down, of course, it's gonna sound absolutely crushing. Um, but in terms of the bass guitar sound, there's nothing really too different. It's when we get to talk about the wall of sound, where his uniqueness really shines. Devin's infamous in the studio for, at times, extreme amounts of guitar and vocal layering, and of course, various MIDI compositions to get his signature sound. Um, and one thing he's always done, whether it be on cleans or distorted guitar tones, is his echo. Um, and this is really delay reverb delay when we're talking guitar pedals or rack units or whatever he used at the time. And um, for him, this is kind of, as he puts it, interacting with the past. If you have all these you know, echoes and uh, delays going on, that it's going to affect what you're playing in the moment, even though you played it a bar ago or what, you know, however long the delay is. So I think it's a really cool um, way of bringing out his personality and his music, and it just sounds freaking epic. I mean, it's, it's so different than uh, what a lot of even other progressive bands do. Like any accomplished artist, his sound has been tweaked over the years though, so I thought it'd be a pretty good idea just to include two while we're at it. As far as the guitar I'm using, this is a Wild Audio Blood Eagle. Um, the most important thing about this is that it has an EMG 81 in the bridge. Everything else about this guitar, Devin would probably cry and run away from because this is not his style whatsoever. He did play explore type guitars um, before, but um, yeah, this is kind of outrageous looking for him. But the main thing is an active pickup. It doesn't terribly matter. We're gonna be crushing the dynamic so much anyway, and you could probably EQ your um, pickup sound like, more like an EMG if, if you are using passive stuff. But now he's using Fishman Fluences, but the voicing he uses on the rhythm sound is basically an EMG sound, and um, it's like the cleans that he uses a lower output humbucker or even passive uh, single coil voicing. So, but for now, we're gonna be mostly talking about the distortion. He also used seven string guitars on like the Ziltoid projects, um, some of the later Strapping Young Lad songs, and even some of uh, his solo stuff around the early 2000s. So you can certainly put that on as well. The uh, one weird caveat about this, open tuning. So this is C, G, C, G, C, E. 
uh, you end up tuning one string up and then the other three down a little bit and um, you get an open C chord. No matter where you're at, it's always a happy major chord if you bar it. Um, and that's definitely contributing to part of his signature play style and all that. So, and that's more or less it. So let's jump into the AX8 and celebrate nearly three decades of Heavy Devi. Let's start off here with the Heavy Devi Modern Patch. And I've actually made a second one, like I said earlier in this video. Um, and I think that trend's going to kind of continue throughout a lot of these uh, tone matches I do coming up. Because either there's some different sounds between two guitarists in a band, or there's a lot of different um, noticeable differences in their tone over the years. And um, it's, it's not as accurate just to do one patch to encompass their entire sound. And I thought that was definitely the case here. So we'll um, walk just kind of through each block. And um, once we do through this patch, we'll kind of understand it. Um, in the next patch is kind of a more stripped down version of this with just a, a very few differences to emulate the more processed 90 sound. Starting from left to right, the volume block, which I currently have disengaged. This I'm using just to back off of the guitar volume without having to touch the volume knob on the guitar itself. And when you use a volume knob, you're actually backing off on some of the upper frequencies as well. So this kind of um, retains your guitar sound, retains the exact same rhythm sound um, that I have here in scene one. That's literally the only difference between these two scenes, but it just enables um, this backed off gain. So like that part in Deadhead, um, instead of sounding like this, And of course, if you'd like, you could um, enable this to like a separate, a separate foot switch if you have something else or um, expression pedal if you have something else that you'd like to, to hook that to. But um, this works well enough for me. For the wah pedal, we're actually ripping these settings and a lot of the other settings you'll see down the line off of a um, patch on Axe Exchange made by Devin back like in 2009 called uh, Loud Masturbator. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it's Devin Townsend. You can't come up, you know, you got to have a name like that. Um, and so this is the exact wall model he was using in that. You see, I got it tied to, um, expression pedal. So, you know, kind of normal zero to 10. And these settings are, are ripped straight from that. Um, other than that, the only kind of weird thing he does is bump the, the, uh, output two decibels, not terribly weird, but, um, also using the Clyde model, which I usually tend to stick to the standard or, or Crybaby, but definitely works for his stuff. I think I have the wall on scene six, um, as well as a couple other modifications. So that's his basic wah sound. He also does some wah stuff with um, clean guitars. I don't think I have any of that in any of these scenes, but you could definitely map that to a scene if you'd like. Uh, back to his basic heavy rhythm sound. We got the Tube Screamer 808 regular OD model here. The um, drive level and tone is kind of your standard heavy metal, you know, drive all the way down, level all the way up. Tone, I think he generally keeps back here somewhere, um, you know, not right around 3 o'clock. I have it a little bit further, and that's kind of going to depend on your play style, how you pick the guitar and... Um, the pickups you're using and you know, I, I just, I like a bit more definition and brighter sound. Devin goes for a very, um, synth like sound anyway. Um, and it, again, it depends on so many other factors that, um, I just didn't copy the, the settings like for like, in fact, the old patch that I based some of this off of was using stuff that, um, like he had the drive up to like three, the tone was at five. It didn't sound right for me for his older material or at least older Devin Townsend project material pretty close um, but I was going for more even more modern than that so I ripped this and um, a couple other things off this patch actually from another video he made it was a gear whore for the Axe FX2 um, great video series if you haven't seen that definitely recommend you go check those out um, he plays his Fishman Fluence pickups uh, Evertunes the uh, John Petrucci Mark II C plus good fun definitely recommend those videos um, but he made just kind of a simple patch that um, I, I use on a lot of these that were mirrored in that other patch as well. So I, I feel pretty uh, confident in, in these selections because of that. The other thing we have here I've got on the Y is the TS-808 mod. Boosted the drive a little bit, backed off on the tone, level still there. The mod's a bit higher gain. 
than the uh, regular OD kind of um, it's, I don't know. It's a bit more TS nine sounding than the, the 808. And so I use this for the leads and I've got that equipped on like um, scene six here with the wah pedal. I think here at scene two, more of a lead type sounding thing. So I've got that, um, but otherwise straight tube screamer. That's kind of his standard thing. In the amp block, we are using a new amp model that uh, has never been seen in any of my videos. The 5153 uh, 50 watt blue channel. So this is an Eddie Van Halen 5150 um, by, made by Fender, of course. And uh, this is the 50 watt version. What's interesting about the 50 watt compared to the 100 watt is uh, the input. Uh, basically, this thing has like twice the amount of gain as the 100 watt. So you could fix that with the input trim. But this is what he used. Uh, uses in his patch i copied the settings straight away um so this is like like for like what he had in his aspects patch and as far as i know this is what he recorded a lot of devin townsend project stuff with um at least as far as the aspects firmware beforehand that uh, aforementioned loud masturbator patch was using the fas modern which is kind of like a perfected 5150 recto sound um but we'll get back to that don't you fear but um, for this, I've got the GEQ a little bit. This is something I usually don't touch, and this isn't copying his settings that he had. Um, but I basically try to give that little bit of smile curve just to boost the highs and, and lows. Because, again, Devin does have a very synth-like guitar sound. And he had uh, a couple more EQs, like parametric EQs and that kind of stuff, stacked um, from like between the the cabinet and after the cabinet but he wasn't using any time based effects in that he was using his other equipment for that so um had to make a little bit more room so i just squished it all here in the geq with the eight band uh preamp i left alone power amp i don't think I, I changed anything in here the power supply i did turn up the sag a little bit although he had it to about five on the modern which i can understand it's a very bright amp i turned it a little bit further back still gets plenty of dynamics and plenty of um, real feel. I did uh, mess with the low frequency, bump that to a 120 and the resonance. I did um, take down a little bit on the low, boost a little bit on the high. Again, just give a little bit more of that, uh, a little less sponginess, a little more of that synth-like um, crispness. And then for speaker drive, these are right ripped off of his settings, three on the compression, uh, just for a bit more consistency in the attack and nothing else I touched here. So yeah, this is definitely more, uh, is a bigger dive into the amp block than I take a lot of the times, but Devin's a tweaker. He is, um, as a self-proclaimed gear whore and, uh, you know, is always fiddling with stuff on his newer tours though. He's actually been using at least before, um, DTP was, you know, put kind of shelved here recently, um, using a Kemper for his distortion sounds. And of course the Axe effects could do all that as well. But um, it's basically all modeled off of 5150s. Um, he used 5150s in Strapping Young Lad, Rectifiers in Strapping Young Lad, and um, Devin Townsend Project as well. So it's between those two amps for his distortion sound. That's pretty much what you're going to get. I also have a clean sound here on scene three. Yes, and this we're using USA Clean. I'm not entirely sure what he would use on Axe FX if he would use it at all because... Um, the aforementioned patches did not have a second amp block nor a Y in, um, in those. So I'm just kind of guessing he is a huge fan of boogie though. So I'm assuming the kind of Lone Star or, um, you know, Mark series cleans is kind of what you're, what he's going for. Um, of course I don't have the proper guitar equipped for this. I don't have like a single coil sound, but I'll kind of try to split the difference and show you what this sounds like. So a nice spacey, clean, uh, of course, echo heavy guitar sound. And uh, where I have this enhanced block on, this is killing my reverb. So um, this is a problem I've been running into on these patches. If you have an Axe FX 2 or especially 3, this is something you shouldn't have to deal with at all. You probably um, just throw whatever time-based effects on it. But again, if I kill this, it'll probably, yeah, it'll come back. So I'm just using that to fill in a little bit more spaciness for, for this demonstration. 
Um, so that's a clean sound um, GQ I do have on just a little bit, and um, you know the, the drive and trebles up just quite uh, just enough to, to give a little bit of high end bite. Um, Devin's clean sound isn't like super, you know, it, it's not like super tube sounding where every little note has a has an aggression to it, but it's definitely not like John Petrucci clean either. So going back to the rhythm uh, for the PEQ, we're kind of doing another smile curve, just bump up the, the low frequency, high frequency. I did take a lot of these values from some of the um, the other EQs that were in the uh, reference patch and just kind of added them all together. Bit of a gate just to um, coincide with our input gate there. Just make sure absolutely no noise gets through. These cabinets, um, this is something I found quite interesting. Devin didn't use second party or third party cabinets on these. Um, he just used stuff that was stock in the box. So F052, we got the um, Ubershaw cabinet that with V30s as well as... Uh, T75s, which are two of my favorite speakers, um, V30s especially, so um, kind of natural fitting, given that he's a boogie guy, and, as well as a 5150 guy, and then uh, German V30, which is an Engel cap, oh, don't want to bump that, and I believe that's an Engel cabinet also with V30, so he just took two red wire impulse responses that sounded good and uh, mixed them together, and I didn't mean to, okay, didn't take too long. Um, one thing he didn't have proximity effect on, I prefer it on, I think it sounds better, so I threw it on just to kind of get it closer to the uh, the produced album tone, uh, but he did not have delay or any of that good stuff, and I have full range on it, which if you're recording this, I would, you know, kind of EQ it afterwards, but works pretty well. Enhancer block, if you're recording, I would turn that off, but it sounds really good for the fullness um, for these demonstrations. Um, I've got a stereo chorus here, which I don't really know how much he uses particularly now nowadays. Um, I mainly use this because when he was still using real pedals, I think he had like a, um, uh, it was an Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine, one of those like silly pink looking pedals um, that sound really cool. So I figured we needed some type of chorus on here. Uh, the main thing I'm using for this is when I'm jamming to tracks and I got to play the lead part and it makes sense because Devin doesn't doesn't really sound like he's using chorus a whole lot anymore, um, but it goes well with synth. So like the parts that um, that Dave played, you know, that, that that's kind of what I would use it for. <laughs> That kind of stuff, just to give a little bit more um, stereo imaging. And then let's get to the fun part. This is where um, this patch goes from boring to heavy devy. Um, so with with just all the stuff we talked about, just the bass rhythm sound, this is what it would sound like. <laughs> Certainly not a bad guitar tone in the least, but it's pretty generic. I mean, it's your classic overdriven 5150 through V30s. It's every band in the world uses that. Um, but here, this is what turns it into Devin Townsend. <laughs> On its own, that sounds so overbearing with this uh, delay reverb delay setup. But once you put it in the mix, it just it sounds right. And um, if you again you have more expression pedals available to you than I do, I think it'd be a good idea to tie the mix on all of these together. That way you can you know manually adjust it um, in a more fine manner than I can. Um, so we're using the mono BBD, which is a, a based off of a rack unit and. Um, Made a very few adjustments. I think the EQ kept pretty much the same. Um, changed some rates. Other than that, I've just got it tied to tempo. That way I can tap tempo on all these reverb, um, not the reverb, but the delays. I could tap tempo, um, change it for each song. A little bit difference in feedback. Reverb, just using straight studio. These two were on the Gear Whore episode, and he was just using delay reverb. 
but his uh, more ocean machine uses delay, reverb, delay. Of course, you don't have to use all three of those, but for that, I just threw on classic analog stereo, and I bumped up the uh, the high frequency to 5,000. I think it was only at 4,000, so still, it's not too overbearing. Um, adds a darker sound um, to the otherwise bright synth guitar sound that, that he has. And um, when you're dialing in these, if you're not going to tie them all together on a pedal, I would recommend doing all of them at like 2% at a time, like dial in just one delay, see what that sounds good at, and then put a reverb on it, turn it up to the same percentage, and then dial it back to like half on each and uh, play with the mix. To me, I think this works out pretty well. Highest on the first delay, kind of a little more mushy, uh, lower value on the reverb, and then um, pretty much the same value on the last delay. And um, that's that's Devin's trick for the echo, is delay, reverb, delay. And of course, I can change it with uh, the foot switch there, just to change the, the tempo for each song. <laughs> And you can explore through all the scenes I set up here. Um, most of these are just set up for what I think will be the most common use cases among his more recent songs. So this would be like, um, you know, here's your bass rhythm one. Here's the lower output, lower gain rhythm sound. Um, this one's kind of the bass lead. This one's a uh, lead with wah pedal instead of chorus. This one is an overdriven clean. This one's straight clean. This one, um, no echo at all. So this be like at the beginning of Super Crush. Of course, that's open B tuning, not open C. Um, and this one's a, a clean thing with wah. So that's Heavy Devi Modern. And as much as I enjoy that last patch, I think this one is my favorite between the two. It's more simple, it's more streamlined, but it sounds like Ocean Machine because that's what I try to model after. Um, and it, that's kind of my favorite Devin Townsend um, album as a whole. You know, there's individual songs across his discography that um, I absolutely adore, but it's in terms of like a singular package, Ocean Machine is near perfect. I love the sounds of that album, love the guitar tone, the songwriting. Um, and I think this captures it pretty well. So everything else stayed, the individual components are pretty close. Uh, copied the wah setting, drive, I backed off on the tone just a little bit. Everything else pretty much identical. For the cabinets, I'm using rectifier just straight um, on, on that one. It's a 4047 mic and um, mixing it with a uh, Marshall own hammer. So getting a little bit more G12 influence in there. Only using the delay and reverb. I feel like these do more you know, the, the job more than well enough on their own um, because it, it just kind of sounds more washed out. Um, and the major difference here is the amp. This is where I went back to the FAS Modern. Um, I got the bright switch turned on, and that's because I, I was thinking about just using a straight rectifier, but apparently he did use some random amps back in, like, um, the, the mid-90s. I believe Ocean Machine and as well as um, Strapping Young Lad City were, were using some type of uh, handmade amp that I, I can't think off the top of my head. It sounded very interesting, very um, unique, but definitely among that among the lines of, of you know rectifiers and, and subsequent 5150. So I thought this was a pretty good candidate. It kind of has that modern distortion sound. Um, I kind of did a, uh, a decreasing slope here to, to cut the highs to match the sound of that record. And um, not a whole lot else I played with. I uh, got a lower um, resonance frequency speaker drive. I didn't touch anything else like that. It's pretty much the same. Um, and of course, you could do a straight EQ match on the album if you have an Axe 2 or 3 to get even closer. But for this, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs>
the scene setups are fairly similar. Um, I think this one, yeah, this one, and I've got the order completely screwed compared to the last patch. You can change that if you'd like, but um, other than that, does very similar stuff. I'm still using the same clean model. Um, there's not too many parts that are clean guitar on that album. They're all kind of, they all got a little bit of bite to them. Um, so not super relevant. And uh, that's pretty much how I have it set up. Everything on the um, the foot switches are, are that way as well. So yeah, that's, um, that's Heavy Devi in Axe 8. Hope you enjoyed that because I had a lot of fun making these and um, again I've been I've been jamming on these for absolutely ever just tweaking them and, and getting getting them closer to my ears. I play each time and I figured now that I got an EMG equipped guitar it was uh, it kind of made sense to go ahead and knock this out. So yeah, I uh, had a lot of fun. Hope you guys do too. Please leave all your comments suggestions down below as always. Doesn't mean I'll get to them, but I'll always think about it. So um, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.